With the saltwater aquarium, if you start seeing a yellow tint in the water, that's often referred to as a gilvan tint, and that's a result of too much biological activity. And that's basically a result of too many fish. So if you're gonna have a lot of fish in your tank, your only real option is to do a lot more water changes because you need to defuse down um, the accumulants. Now the accumulants are all sorts of things, even like pheromones, phenols, and all these other things that do build up in your water as a result of having too many fish in it. And those things do stunt the life and the growth of your fish. So at the end of the day, mother nature will give you a capacity. Mother nature will allow you to have a certain amount of fish in the tank. But if you exceed that amount, then there will be consequences. Generally, you might lose a fish every now and then, one might die, or mother nature might send a disease and wipe out a whole bunch of them just to get underneath the biological capacity level. So the things that can help, um, good surface agitation and water flow can help. More water changes is the biggest thing. Good quality food can help. And then medias like activated carbon and polyfilter. All these things can buy you time. Also making sure that you're doing a spring clean every now and then, which is where you take your rocks and all that out. You give your sand a really good clean. And even a spring clean in your filter. So there are definitely things that can buy you time. But ultimately, there's no such thing as an aquarium that can hold an unlimited amount of fish. Every single tank has a capacity. And remember that even if your tank is under the capacity, as the fish grow, they can still grow out of their capacity. So this is a forever fluid situation. Well, that's, no, I think we want to turn it up so there's more water flow. Uh, actually, that's facing down. So if you can turn it to face it up, that actually might help. Straight out of it? Yeah, if you, if you turn that because what we're really wanting is surface agitation and the surface agitation will help to um, break the surface tension and that'll help to increase the dissolved oxygen level of the water. So that, that should turn, that side piece, you should be able to turn it. And if we can turn that to face it up, so we're breaking the surface more, then that will increase the dissolved oxygen level which will also help to increase the redox potential which will like see that's that's if you can make it more like that that's heaps better or you could turn it down a little bit more so it's not bouncing up so much right. but that's made a big difference and let's try the setting to see if we can turn the actual power up and then and you can do the same with the other side to maximize the surface agitation. So that, that's improved a little bit already. Um, no, the other side hasn't been done yet. You can turn the other side now. Just do exactly what you did on that side. Yeah, a bit more. If you can turn it a bit more. Oh, that's getting pretty good now. So what we don't want is flat surface. Flat surface has high surface tension. High surface tension means lower dissolved oxygen level and lower redox potential. So that's all helping. Now one thing to be aware of is in an aquarium like this, there's a lot of very aggressive fish. Now just sitting here, um, you can see the stripies, they're very aggressive. They're chasing each other around and the other fish. Um, sergeant majors are very aggressive. Blackfish are very aggressive. The key to very aggressive fish is to understand that they are aggressive. So um, um, behavioral stress is something that you'll always um, have to factor with. But population is the key. So these fish, there's quite a lot of some of these fish. So the aggression is often dispersed by the numbers. So when you've got more fish and the, there's more distraction, then the fish tend to survive better. If you had less fish, um, then the fish tend to concentrate their aggression more 
and then you tend to have more problems. So very much like keeping something like cichlids in fresh water, if you have a high populated cichlid tank, your fish tend to get along better than a tank with not too many fish in which the fish tend to be more aggressive. But you've got some fish in here that grow quite large and just be aware that as the fish grow and as the um, aggression intensifies, then you are going to expect consequences from that because fish are aggressive to suppress competition. So therefore, the fish are aggressive to basically allow individuals to dominate and therefore losing fish in the presence of aggression is something that definitely has to be expected. Now this tank is full of very aggressive fish. Now one thing you need to understand with aggressive fish is that there are winners and there are losers. So if you have a tank of aggressive fish, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you've got plenty of fish because the aggression can be dispersed amongst the numbers of fish and the distraction within individual fights and so forth will be high. So therefore you'll tend to have more success when you have more fish. But due to the aggression, aggression is to suppress competition. So therefore the aggression is going to create suppression. And within that suppression, you're going to lose some fish because what these fish want is to um, earn themselves territories, earn themselves the ability to um, have feeding territories and, and uh, the ability to feed and ultimately the ability to attract a mate and breed. So as the fish grow and as the weaker fish are ex uh, experiencing more and more stress, then the immune system of the weaker fish falls and then some of the fish have to die. That's just the way that it goes because you've got winners and losers in this world of aggression and the winners will grow and dominate the tank and the weak fish will slowly die off and that's just the game that you play if you choose to have aggressive fish. And ultimately every tank has a capacity and as the fish grow, they need to suppress the other fish in order for them to um, monopolize that capacity. So they get to dominate the environment and they get to grow and they get to thrive. And that is at the expense of the other fish. So if you don't mind the action and the chaos, then by all means keep these fish. But on the other hand, you could get fish that aren't so aggressive and these um, factors will not be so pre prevalent ornaments like this one thing that's really great is to take them out put them in the sun and the sun will dry out the algae and then it will fall off and then turn the ornament over leave it in the sun for another day or so so you when you hit it with a hose you want all the algae just to fall off and that will make the ornaments look heaps better but all of these sorts of ornaments they do have a shelf life um, and after a while they do sort of need replacing so that has made a massive difference Look at the surface agitation now. That's heaps better. Now the other thing to be aware of is that fish like tangs. Now there's a dory fish in here or a blue tang. Uh, these fish are skinned fish. Now a skinned fish lacks the protection of a scaled fish. So this tank has very high population and it's running very high phosphate and nitrate and phosphate and nitrate will erode the immune system of the fish. Now the scaled fish are going to have a more effective body slime and a layer of scales, which is going to be a, an amount of protection for them, which the skinned fish is not going to have. The scaled fish also tend to be less prone to parasitic infections and other issues. The other thing is this tank tends to run a very low pH and that's just due to the amount of fish. Lots of fish with lots of metabolic waste and lots of carbonic waste um, are going to drop the pH of the fish, the fish tank. And the pH is going to be, the acid from the low pH is going to affect a skinned fish much more than a more protected scaled fish. So the reality is some fish are just more hardy than others. And typically your scaled fish 
have an extra layer of protection that is not available to the skinned fish. If you're trying to learn about fish behavior and you're trying to work out which of your fish are aggressive, it is very important that you do not do that while you are visibly present because you wouldn't believe how differently fish will behave when you're watching. So if you actually just go right back and you find somewhere that you can view the tank from, where you become out of the, um, the attention of the fish, and uh, we've even done things like put video cameras on tanks where we have not been able to identify an aggressive fish at all. And then once we leave the room and leave a video running, we can review that footage and find that individuals that you wouldn't think are aggressive are actually the really bad ones. Because once again, I mean, it would be almost like if, if God was um, visible, you're probably not going to punch him. Yeah, whereas if he's not there, you might be more likely to. But whatever your theory is on that. But the fish are definitely, um, um, they definitely are aware of your presence. And they're very aware of, I guess, you being a dominant being that feeds them and so forth. So fish do quite commonly act very different when you're present. So whether that means put a camera on the tank or whether that means you sort of hide and sit away for a while until they forget you're there, um, you can be amazed how differently um, some of the fish actually behave when they've forgotten that you're watching. Yeah, so just be aware with any of your fish that are scratching, um, it'll usually mean a couple of different things. It'll either mean that the pH is too low which in this case I definitely know that it's too low. Um, it can be other sorts of irritations, which um, could be a result of, let's say, accumulants or lack of water changes. Um, and it also can be pathogens. So if they did crack out with white spot or anything like that, it is quite common to see the fish scratch like that. So just doing a general check of your water quality and doing what you can to look at the pH um, make sure that you're not seeing any other signs of white spot. But um, the scratching is, if it's just every now and then, it's probably not too much to worry about. But if it does become prolific, it is saying that there is an irritation. So um, it is definitely something that you want to look into because the more stressed fish tend to scratch, a happy, healthy fish will tend to not scratch, um, which will not have some sort of irritation.